How's it going folks? Welcome to the best guitar unboxing video on YouTube. There's the boxes. There's the guitars. Alright, let's dive right into it. You know how we do it here on this channel. I'm just getting the phone kind of set up here, so bear with me. Alright, here we go. I hope you guys are all doing really good. We just got back from Nashville, Tennessee. It's my neighbor TJ, my friend. Uh, we uh, bought a couple guitars. <laughs> that we did. We really didn't plan on it, but it just kind of happened. So, what we got here is a couple of George Groon's design. These are Groon Versatas. Uh, we won't bore you with all the gory details. Let's just see what they sound like. All right, here we go. What'd you think of that unboxing? Painless, right? So, I told you guys there was a little story that went along with these, and uh, we weren't ex really planning on buying guitars, we just kind of wanted to look around and check the store out, and uh, this whole journey kind of started with uh, Tom Bukovac's channel, which I stumbled on a couple years ago. I think the first video I watched, it was, the title was like The Secret or something. And, it, you know, I was like, oh yeah, here we go. Master the fretboard. He, one of those, you know. And I clicked on it anyway, and he was just showing intervals and inversions. And I was like, yeah, that is the secret. So... I kind of stuck with his channel. I didn't know he was famous or anything like that. And uh, eventually, I saw him doing a video with Greg Voros, who has uh, hooked up with this acoustic coffee company, and uh, it's funding people's treatments for multiple sclerosis. You guys know I have MS, so it kind of hit home with me, and I really paid attention to that video. So when we got to Groom's, we walk in the door and checked out a bunch of nice new Martins, and everybody's really nice there. It's a beautiful store, too. Very nice. It's laid out so good, you know. Uh, nice place to try out a guitar. Sounds good. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. As soon as you walk through the door, they tell you to play anything you want. Absolutely. It's That's very, the first thing nice. they tell you. You know, yep. if you're going to buy it, you got to try it, right? Yep. Yep. Uh, so, we tried out a bunch of Martins, and uh, I played a few, uh, maybe a couple Taylors. I can't remember now. Uh, and I, we were getting ready to leave, and uh, I saw Greg Voros sitting in a 
chair by the door and I recognized him from that video and I almost didn't say anything but I I just wanted to at least say thank you for what he was doing you know helping people get treatment so at least somebody's doing something you know and uh, I just kind of said you know I, I recognize you from an Uncle Larry video and I just want to say thanks for what you're doing to help people get treatments for MS. And he asked me if I had MS, and I told him I did. And the next thing I know, me and TJ and our wives were in an elevator going up to meet George Groom. Pretty surreal. I wasn't expecting anything like that at all. But what a day. Two yeah, days, sure actually. Yeah. So, you know, he he took us through the whole place. We get to meet all the luthiers. We get to see a 59 Las Paul that was mm -hmm. getting worked on. Yeah. Uh, and it was crazy. Uh, George showed uh, our wives his snake collection. It was, it's insane. I mean, this is epic stuff, you know. We weren't expecting any of this. And it was just so cool for him to take the time out of his day, you know, to hang with us. He played a couple songs for us. I bet he played for us for a solid 10 minutes. Easy. Maybe 15 minutes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it was a great experience. Very humble. You know, I he's a good player, too. I told him that. He's like, oh, I'm not as good as you guys. And I was like, I'm not going to argue with man like him. I was lucky to even be sitting there, but he's a great player. And I really like his style. He plays with a thumb pick and a, just the one finger pick, but he's really good with it, isn't he? He is. Um, so, the only thing that popped in my head, you know, I didn't expect to meet him, but right out of the blue I remembered that off Uncle Larry's channel, they were talking about these guitars, and I think I saw Uncle Larry playing one for a few minutes or a little snippet of it. And so I asked George about his guitars that he was designing, and he said that he had some built. And I asked him if he'd sold any, and he said, Today's the first day that they're going on the sales floor. And there was this look <laughs> that happened right there yeah, between like, us. Yeah. Like, uh It's like one of the chances we showed up on the on the D day they went up for sale. I mean you know? the escalator was just going yeah. up and yeah. up and up. Yeah. So TJ bought this guitar number fifteen the first day, which is a beauty. Uh George played that for us. We have pictures with George, the whole thing, you know. So, uh, he told us that, you know, he invited us to come back the next day. And he said he'd have three new ones that he was picking up that morning. And that's where this one come from. And... He said this was the first one they made with this Nicaraguan rosewood. This is one piece, same here. These both have cedar tops, and they have a treble and a bass bar. That's it. And the bass response, I mean, it sounds like a bass guitar. It's just thin, you know? So... When he said this was the first one they made with this wood configuration, I had to pull the trigger. I could have bought number 14, which is which the is, number before this. Which was just like this. Identical. Yeah. And we played number 14. Yeah. We played the prototype. We played number 7. This is number 21. Uh, and that's number 15, like I said, so... It was just surreal. Yeah. And the second day we were there, while George was like taking the numbers and all the stuff off this, uh, we played 
I don't know, a half a dozen or more pre-war Martin guitars. Yeah. Another bucket list item. My bucket list, my bucket got emptied right there at that one <laughs> store. Yeah. So yeah. crazy. Uh, man, I'll just say this. This is probably, because I wanted to know what the difference was, you know. Never even seen, been in the same room as a pre-war Martin. I just wanted to know what the hype was. That was really yeah. something I just wanted to capture while I was still alive. And I think the best description I could give on a pre-war Martin is, in layman's terms, is this. If you play an electric guitar through a solid-state amp for a long time and then plug it into a tube amp, You'll hear yeah. like extra I, things, I totally get that. Yeah. little overtones, yeah. right? Yeah. Extra yeah. notes, and yeah. it's just weird. Yeah. And we've all experienced this, I'm sure, right? That's kind of what it is with the old guitars, isn't it? Yeah. And I heard extra stuff. Like, I, I think that's the best way to describe it. Yeah. Really, huh? Yeah, it's definitely a. It's hard to describe the tone that you're getting. New, it's, it's a nuance. It's, it's a nuance, yeah. and it's definitely a feeling, you know. Uh, really, just, just playing one of those instruments, and it's definitely a tone that I've never had in my hands before. Me either. And the and same with good. These. Oh, it's, oh, it's really all good. good. Yeah. yeah. Don't. Yeah. Don't and compare. You can't compare a new Martin guitar to a pre war It's just. It's just not the same thing. And we played some, we played We played a couple D18s there. I think one was a 39, maybe the other one was a 42. Yeah. Those almost melted me right into the floor and left a puddle. They, them sounded so nice. And then we played a couple triple O's. Uh, don't try to compare those either because they're totally different animals. You know, they didn't, they weren't, they didn't like tweak my ear like the D18s, but they, you know, if that was the only guitar there in that room, it would have melted you. Because yeah. it's just got that thing, you know? Yeah. yeah. So the last guitar that I played while George was like taking the info off this one and getting my, ad, my address and everything was an old Gibson guitar. It was black and a dark first and it was pre-war too I'm pretty sure I couldn't really read the tag I think it said AJ55 don't quote me on that but that thing sounded so nice and I played it for a few minutes it was really broken nice and when I was hanging it back on the rack I looked at the tag and it said, Owned and played by Tom Bukovac. And the hair stood up on my arms and I just... That's where it ended. Thus, thus completes the circle. It started with Uncle Larry and ended with Uncle Larry. And there's one more thing. If you're watching this, Uncle Larry, we got, like, hooked on Yingling out there <laughs> in Nashville. <laughs> Excuse me, and they don't sell it in Maine, so we're like calling the boroughs yeah. and the five families or whatever we gotta do, right? Yeah, we need some sort we of We need Yingling in New we need, we need a connection. It needs sure. to happen. Yeah. Uh so there's that. Yeah. You guys better pay attention to that homeschooling channel. Man, we learned a lot of stuff. I mean I don't know. This was a weird experience all the way around, but I must say it was one of the, one that I will never forget as long as I live. Yeah, same here. And yeah, I mean, my bucket's empty, so I got to add some new bucket list stuff. Where do you go from there? I mean, yeah. honestly, these guitars are going to be part of the guitar his, history. There's no question. Yeah. Designed by a guy that 
has seen every production flaw in every maker yeah. of guitar, right? Yeah. These have a dual truss rod, two-way truss rod that goes all the way to the end of the fretboard. Yeah. Bolt I, on I love neck. the fact that it's a bolt-on neck. The bolt-on neck is killer. I love the fact that there's no filler in this guitar. Yeah, show them, the, show them the finish, TJ. Let me get up and make sure it comes in in focus, but... They're open pour. It's finished with something, but it's, it's you sealed. can see it. Yeah, it's, it's sealed, sealed, but there's no filler in this. Man, look at that wood. actually feels awesome. It does. It really does. And it it's already opened up and breathing, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. Mine's the same thing. It's just, uh, you know, it's an open grain like that. And That's the, one the piece, too. Thin? The neck's really um, thin. It feels very electric-like. It um, does. The neck feels about the same width as a, as a Strat. Yeah. Um, Hence the If you're an electric right? guitar player like, like we are, yeah. typically, it's totally comfortable. And you can play anything on this that you can play on electric. In the thickness of the body, too... It just feels it's so very, it's comfortable. Very, yeah, it's very comfortable. It's yeah. way more comfortable than a than a dreadnought. Or I agree. Yeah. yeah, I do agree with that. Yeah, yeah, when you played it, just you know, like when you pick up an acoustic and you just automatically like go to like okay, acoustic songs. And you you, you don't feel this, like doing that on this. When you pick this up, yeah. it just feels like yeah. you can do whatever you it's, want. It's home. Yeah, it is home. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah. these are both cedar top. Yeah. And yours is uh, rosewood. rosewood back and sides yeah. with yeah. cedar yeah. on top. Amazing, amazing quality, really. This one is electrified with LR bags, right? I think that was what it was. Yeah. Uh, I really didn't. That wasn't really something I was looking for, but when he told me this was the first model of this guitar that they made with this wood, I didn't care if it had a nuclear bomb inside it. I was behind <laughs> Not it. Not only that, but it sounded freaking It did, yeah, it has, yeah. It's, these are different, yeah. but yeah. they're similar, but they are a little different. Yeah. That yeah. one has a little big of bass maybe, response. Yeah, a little, little uh, bassier. A little yeah. richer. This one's, one's more like... Brighter. Yeah, a little brighter, more like flat picker stuff, kind of. Yeah. yeah. Uh, plugged in, it sounds really nice, too. I'll do another video on this, but on both of them. I'll, I'll, I'd like to do a really in-depth video on both of these guitars for you guys, because if you're thinking about getting an acoustic, it's just something different. It has that... What we just discussed about pre-war Martins, I'm not comparing these to it, but it has a nuance in the tone, right? Yeah. It's just, it's a, it's an acoustic guitar, but it just sounds so different. And uh, in a good way, totally. Uh, you know, this is George's creation, and I'm super proud to own it. Well, yeah, I mean, his goal was to do something different. It's, what and What did he tell us about Martin he, Tone? He, he said, you know, the the world's got enough Martin clones, and he, he, his philosophy was, if you want a, uh, uh, you know, a Martin sound, buy a Martin. They're yes. great. He said that yeah, but, exactly, um, word for word. And uh, he, his goal was to do something different, and he definitely did. He did, yeah. And he improved on all these design flaws, in my opinion. I mean, these guitars are so well built and they just feel so good to play, so comfortable to hold. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm down. Yep. I'm very glad that I yep. bought this guitar now. I really Me am. Uh, we wasn't planning on it, like I said, but George Croon's a good salesman too. He wailed on these things for a couple of minutes before he gave them to us. Yeah. He was getting these broken and opening them up a little bit, you know, before we got to play them. 
and he did tell us they'll they'll get better, you know, the more you play them, which is totally true. So here we are, guys, back from Nashville. Got some really cool guitars. You need to check these out for sure, yep. right? Yep, without a doubt. And thanks, George, for taking the time to show us around and to sell make us, us feel welcome. Absolutely. Yep. Top top of the pile right there for us. Yep. And uh, we really love these guitars. They're amazing. Yep. Highly recommend them, don't we? Yep. Already. Yep. No yep. question. Yep. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. We're going to do some more in-depth videos on these two. Uh, some close-ups right on the bench, under the light. And we'll really go over these a little better for you, but... This is what it is for today. We just cut them open and trying them out. You know, yeah. it's epic. And it's, you know, something else. It's really cool to hear these in this room because we're really familiar with what an acoustic guitar sounds like in this room. Yeah. Uh, man, it's, it's epic. <laughs> That's all I can say. Yeah. Thanks again to everybody. Thanks to all the guys at Groom. You really, really made us feel welcome, and we'd love to come back there someday and uh, and poke around in the store and maybe come home with a couple other guitars, right? Yeah. There was some electrics there that I really kind of liked, too. Yeah, me too. You know, here's the other thing. I just want to mention this. If you guys go to George's store... You know, he sells to rock stars. He, he told us stories about it, about yeah. selling Clapton guitars and yeah. still a customer and that sort of thing. Uh, don't be intimidated because the working man can go in that place and buy a killer guitar, right? We, we went in dressed like uh, schlubs. Yeah, I was, yeah. <laughs> and we're treated just fine, so. He treated us yeah. like rock stars, literally. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. And, you know, I get that. He's that kind of person. I don't think it really changes his gauge either no, way. He's no. just... He's what, just a down-to-earth person. He's down-to-earth, and he's a real, true yep. blue guy. Yep. So thanks again, all you guys at Groom. Thank you, George, for taking the time to, to show us these beautiful guitars. We really, really enjoy them. And we're going to enjoy them for years and years to come. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. Be good. We'll see you soon. Get to grooms and buy some guitars.